What is up, everybody? Palangi Studio of Rock. Welcome, Matt Walst here from My Darkest Days and Three Days Grace. What's going on, man? How you doing out there? Good, man. It's uh, it's been a like rainy, crappy kind of week here. It is. We've been having the same weather here, but it's better than snow, you know, because you guys, I'm sh uh, upstate yeah. New York. Okay, so yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm about up. uh seven hours from toronto something like that yeah 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 i don't mind the snow you know we had a we had a bunch of snow uh like i think a couple of weeks ago or like last week and like we had a good like two two and a half feet of snow so i have two snowmobiles so uh, i go out in it all the time and it, it's fun but this in between stuff it's like slop so yeah i was gonna ask i was like what are you gonna do uh during your spare time because i've seen some videos of you on like four wheelers and stuff like that skiing yeah so i i live uh i live outside of peterborough ontario i live out in the country i have uh 25 acres uh that yeah lots of four wheeling dirt bikes snowmobiles yeah, I grew up on them, so it's yeah. nice to be able to, to use them. Do you fix them. them too? Do you work on them? Um, small stuff like yeah, yeah. I can I can change a spark plug. That's about where my <laughs> my dad's into that. He rebuilds like you know dirt bikes and four wheelers and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I yeah. wish I knew more. But like I wish I knew more. Uh, in uh, in high school, I I had a choice to go into automotive or um, what was it? It was. Uh, home ec it was called which is yes. like straight sewing, to your stomach right though sewing cooking and uh yeah i, I, I like i thought oh well in uh, like automotive it's all gonna be dudes and in home ec <laughs> it's all gonna be girls but i'm going in home ec so that's true yeah. that's a smart I guy can, i can sew pretty well so like all the patches and stuff on my jackets and like you know nice ripped, ripped crotches i can sew them up pretty quick yeah, well, you're on tour, you got nobody else, so what are you going to do? You know, you got to do oh, it yourself. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, when I when I sew stuff and, then, uh, you know, then it gets the other uh, band members interested. They're like, oh, I need something sewed too. And so I, yeah, like, do you change patches just... and stuff? You're like, I don't want that one anymore. Whew. Yeah, yeah. It's cool stuff. It's... um. It's it's funny having you on here because I'm like uh, yeah I'm telling my friends and stuff yeah I'm interviewing you know Matt from Three Days Grace and I'm like what 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 are you doing <laughs> everyone out there in the network too is very excited uh, for for cool. this chat and everyone tuning in we're on the radio right now but you can see obviously this uh, video version uh, to social media and YouTube and stuff later so I appreciate it. shout out to to our supporters uh, we have envious music magazine Alyssa Ebersold concert photography and Melissa Harding vocal coach extraordinaire so if you need reviews and you need band photos and vocal coach stuff which i was going to talk to you about make sure you hit them up i seen a post do you work with a vocal coach now yeah um there's a guy named mitch seekins he's just in uh london ontario just outside of london ontario and i've been doing uh vocal lessons with him now uh, oh, i think over five years um, oh, wow. since human record so yeah it's been a long time how has that advanced your singing style i know with me it's it was more about uh warming up and warming down which i yeah. never knew about like oh you got to do warm-ups after your set too yeah i never do uh warm downs he doesn't really recommend it like it, it's not like a, a big deal but definitely warming up before before the show um and like a little lip trills like when you wake up like i always uh do a little lip trills and like kind of see what i got for the day yeah um but like still like morning is much different than uh evening like it's it's crazy how much your body like can um you know uh, reduce inflammation over uh just a couple hours like yeah do you, you know. do you find when you wake up you're like more congested and that kind of goes away and oh yeah always. yeah oh, that's that's but, how i am like my voice is really bassy now and it'll kind of go away towards the end of the day yeah i'll get more more high andy um yep. yeah i just find uh yeah, like over over the tour, my falsetto will go away completely. But I don't use any of that uh, falsetto anyways in like a live show. We don't have anything that's falsetto. Yeah, yeah. It kind of turns into this kind of... Ah! Like, <laughs> it's good for backup vocals when you're yeah. recording. You know what I mean? 
yeah. I was listening to uh, uh, the Mountain and and some other songs off that record, and I, I could hear some of those backing harmonies and stuff. And I go, he probably doesn't have to sing those live, which we're all like, it's kind of a relief, right, for a singer. It's like, oh, we don't have to do those high parts. Oh yeah. yeah. But um, what I've got a lot of questions, but uh, let's let's go back here. How did you first start singing? What made you, uh, you know, do like rock and hard rock style versus you know? country or, or anything um you know like i was a big fan of deftones uh when they released white pony i was a big big fan and like uh, around the fur i was a big fan of that album too and uh, what's the first album adrenaline or is it adrenaline or adrenaline i, I, think, I think so i'm yeah, not i'm but, a fan but i'm not like a huge fan of them yeah i was a, i was a big big fan back in like 98 99 2000 so even when i was still in high school uh we were covering deftones and uh you know like i i really lo loved his voice and like on on those records and uh you know i i try to like scream like i'm saying like i'm and like, <laughs> like he was kind of my you know was kind of my inspiration to kind of start doing it for myself and like start singing and you know like some people are, are born with a great voice and then some people can develop a voice and like, you don't really know until you do it and like really yeah. start try, trying to do it. And uh, yeah, just kind of developed it over the years. Yeah. It's something where uh, it's, it's not like mimicking, but it's like we mimic the people that we like at first. That's how we all yeah. start. We're kind of all, I guess, cover song singers, you know, to start with. And it's weird because yeah. it's like, well, what, now what does my voice exactly sound like? And then, well, I can't do that like that guy. So maybe I'll do this. And that eventually what makes you you. Yeah, yeah. Which for is sure. interesting. So you had some high school bands and stuff. And then where where did you come up with the name? Did you come up with the name My Darkest Days? Where'd that come from? Yeah, like uh, my guitar player at the time had an MSN sign in that was Darkest Days. And uh, oh, okay. We were we were big fans of um, uh, Stabbing Westward, and they had a oh, record. Yeah. They had a record called uh, Darkest Days. After uh, the first record was, uh, oh, that's the what is it? Blister, Eel, something like that. It was a great record. But anyways, we saw that, and then uh, I saw that, and I was like, well, what? What if it was like my darkest days? And like I found on you know, my darkest days that I wrote the, the best material and it was like kind of, you know, therapy and, uh, yeah, that's how we came up with that name. That's awesome. Sometimes it's yeah. random, you know, it's like, I don't know. I've seen it on a pizza box. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool. He drew from, from one of their songs and the albums and stuff. I, they were on, I believe the Crow three soundtrack or something. That's how I found uh -huh. them or Bride of Chucky. One of them. Yeah. So you kind of listen to the same stuff that I did growing up, but like Power Man 5000 and and some yeah. of that kind of style. Yeah. Were you a fan of like the horror movies that had that type of music in there? Um, Not so much. Okay. Like not much of a horror. Like like a, my favorite one of my favorite movies is Lost Boys. But uh, OK, it's it's not like, you know, over super the top. scary. Yeah. <laughs> All those jump scares in the 80s, you know, they'll get you. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> so from there, um, so I, I, I've heard you guys were still like practicing in, in your basement, basically. And then how did you get to where it's like we had we have this because you guys blew up fast when, when it happened? Because I remember I seen you, I believe it was in the first three weeks or four weeks or something of that first tour. We were yeah. like, who are, who, are the, who are these guys? And I think yeah. you're, I don't know if you're the first one, but very close to, I was like, why does he have two mics on stage? I think he used, huh. we can talk about that later. Yeah. But. Um, back in those days, I probably only used one. But yeah, that first tour was with uh, Sick Puppies. And, uh, you know, we blew up quick, but the the time that it took behind that, like, uh, was a long time. Like, uh, you know, some of those songs i wrote back in like well started the idea back in the two early 2000s like 2099 uh, yeah. uh it's called save me that's the first song off the record it was uh like i recorded that or made that like in 98 99 uh every lie was around the same time so like old old material wow. but then 
then you like you take it to like a, a songwriter like Chad Kruger and uh, he can elaborate on it. And I learned a lot from those guys, Chad Kruger and Joey Moy. Um, Their production like, techniques are within the songwriting too. It's it's interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah. And both of those dudes are were high level uh, songwriters at that time. And uh, just to sit in a room with them and like like. And back in the day, I, I kind of thought about what the song was about, but like I just rely on feeling and like like okay, like this is how this riff makes me feel. It makes me feel angry, or it makes me feel sad, or and then I'd elaborate on that with like sad lyrics and like or uh, angry lyrics, or you know like yeah, and putting emotion into it. But I never really sat back and was like, okay, what am I writing about? What am I talking about? Where uh, that was the first step to that when I hung out with Joey and Chad, like we'd focus on what, we're, what the hell we're talking about and not yeah. be vague. Yeah. It's like, what are you trying yeah. to say here? You know what I mean? Well, yeah. yeah, dude, it's a cool line. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's what you're thinking. And yeah, it's, yeah. you know, some, some musicians get to that point and they're like, no, this is the way it is. This is like, this is my art, man. And yeah. like through with my art. So, you know, at that point, like, I was super cooperative and like listened to everything they had to say because, you know, here I am just a, you know, I think I was like, like 25 or 24 when I started writing with Chad and, uh, you know, like here I am small town kid, like fit 1300 people getting flown out to Vancouver to go <laughs> hang out. With man. Chad Kruger. It was crazy. Like I still, I still remember getting the call from him. Uh, my brother shot him a demo uh that we had and uh i still remember getting a call like hey it's chad Kruger." you i'm like what is this a prank call you know yeah yeah no. we want you can know, you we sing want can you, you sing like him <laughs> yeah come out oh. and hang out like at the house and write some songs so it, it was pretty crazy like did you surreal. did you run into daughtry because i think daughtry kind of wrote some stuff with them too um, no, I was there when they were working with Daughtry, though. I was hearing the, the demos of the songs that they were working with them. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. And actually, uh, second record, I was there listening to, uh, you know, the song Cruise by Florida Georgia Line? Not the top of my head, but I know the Big band. Song, you make me want to roll my window. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I heard that before, like the whole world did. Like it was in demo stages, and then it became the biggest country song in the world. Like that. But, that's what Joey's doing now. He, now he has like his own record label, uh, Big Loud uh, Mountain, I believe it is. Or, and uh, he has Morgan Wallen. He moved out to Nashville, and uh, he's just like Ernest Hardy, uh, Morgan Wallen. All that's coming yeah. out of pretty much Joey's record label, and pretty crazy stuff yeah do you find that everybody is moving to nashville because everybody that i've interviewed they all they're all like going there a lot yeah. of local musicians here that i've worked with they're they're all like going there that's the place to be like for songwriting and uh session players and all that um, yeah central hub for that studio stuff i think it's hard if you're a country artist and you're trying to make it in nashville because there's a million of them there oh yeah yeah. So it was like, uh, was it um, California back in the day when Metallica and Megadeth, you know, yeah. at the Sunset Strip and all that, there was there was a dime a dozen, you know, glam metal bands and whatever. I'm sure yeah. that was really tough. You know, there was bands that, um, there was an old documentary I just watched on like, it was like a VH1 something back in the day. And there's some of these 80s metal bands I've never heard of that were just like Poison and stuff. And I go... They were just as good, but either the the drugs took them or they just never made a good yeah. decision, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They were, like, labels were signing a lot of, like, artists back then. Like, labels were, major labels were, like, throwing money at uh, a lot of artists because, like, you know, the artists that they had that blew up were making so much money back then off yeah. uh, record sales. and Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where uh, I think you guys got in right at the last minute because the industry changed from 2010 to to 15. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's I I hear now it's it's it is a lot different. They're like you don't make the 80s money anymore in the 90s and and I'm like nope. well 
yeah, you got the streaming and you got, you know, a bunch of other yeah. stuff. A lot of people don't know about it. You know, a lot of people don't talk about that, that side of the industry, but I try to hint on it a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know, if, if you can make money from, uh, creating music and, and playing music, like I, it, no matter how much money that is, like, I think it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, miracle almost in these days, you know? Yeah. To, to get paid for your art. It's like an artist, yeah. you know, you sell a painting, you just sold one painting. So what's next? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and yeah. is that going to retain you? So, um, you, you guys, uh, I was going to say uh, just really quick, how did, uh, what's the story behind every lie? Cause I know, now I know it was written, you know, a couple years before. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, you know, back in the day, uh, it's hard to remember, like, writing that song. Uh, <laughs> That's one of my uh, favorites. Yeah, like, it's just about, um, you know, uh, a girlfriend that's not truthful uh, back in those days or, or a sp like, somebody that you're, you're with. And, uh, yeah, like, just elaborating on that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Simple enough, right? Yeah. I like it. So, um I've heard there was, you were, you guys, so you guys were going to go into a third record and you recorded, I think a few demos or something. Yeah. You, you think we were ever going to hear those flying, flying around someday? Um, actually like, uh, painkiller was one of them that we started, in, uh, with MDD and, uh, actually became the first single with me in the band with three days grace. Uh, yeah. you know, we, we, we changed it up a lot and, uh, it became what it became but uh yeah it was originally going to be an mdd tune before the whole blow up happened and yeah wow that's cool though that yeah. you could you know i was gonna say is listening to your first two records especially the second record i can hear that in the in the three days grace stuff now yeah. it changed yeah. three days grace style from especially from what adam did to this and i i can hear it and i was like there's little nuances and stuff, not just your voice, but in the music and stuff too that had come over. Well, and like the last record with Adam was uh, Transit of Venus, and they were using like a lot of keyboards and stuff in, in, on that record. So um, I, I don't feel like Human had a lot of like, you know, keyboards, so only a little bit, but uh, definitely we started bringing it in more into, uh, you know, Outsider and especially the last record. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, it, uh, we all bring a different thing to the table and styles and uh, you know, there's songs that we have recorded with three days grace and like started that uh, we're just like way to my darkest days. And like, uh, uh, you know, they're just <laughs> chilling, but you, you know, ever... there's. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, do you oh. ever, you ever get where um, you like, you're writing a song. You're like, I'm ripping off my own song right now. Like it's almost the same thing. Yeah, we call that style. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Like, it can it can happen. Yeah, for sure. Like my riffs, uh, a lot of my riffs are are very similar, and uh, yeah, it's it's hard to not be yourself, you know. Do you play guitar on on the records too, ever, or you just yeah. write write like, with guitar? No, I just write with guitar usually uh, with Three Days Grace. I I did play a bit on My Darkest Days stuff, but uh, you know, like. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm like a nail at guitar. Like I made, made up my own way of kind of playing and, and drop tuning and like, you know, I'm not the greatest guitar player. So, uh, you know, and, and that's another thing with when, when you, when you're like, uh, recording records with like, you know, people that are uh, experienced and stuff like that was one thing too. I was like, Oh, am I, I'm going to play all the guitar and stuff. And like, <laughs> you have to realize that there's somebody who can play the guitar like like 10 times better and like you know yeah or just yeah. just the idea in your head you're like this guy puts it down you know what i mean oh yeah yeah like yeah it's just like a wicked guitar player so back in those days i'd like he would he would play a lot of the guitars on the records and yeah yeah i was um i mean your guys uh the both bands like the production and stuff is is uh they're, they're obviously when we folks like when we record we add more than one guitar obviously when you guys play out you have one guitarist and yeah. with a lot of stuff i do hear a few guitar riffs and stuff 
I was gonna say that might must be a little challenging sometimes with with one guitar. Um, yeah. And and but you guys sound you know so big. Yeah, as... you you choose and like Barry Stock is like an awesome guitar player. So uh, you know, with Three Days Grace, you it's always like held down very well uh, in the guitar section by Barry. So, yeah. Did you guys yeah. use a click uh, for My Darkest Days? Yeah, yeah, we ran to yep. click. And stuff. Yeah. Back yeah. then, you were like, the, the people thought you're like, you used a click. You know what I mean? Like, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. No, like, and, and that's one thing. Like, when you start out, uh, like, jamming and stuff, you never use click. Uh, back yeah. in the day, I remember, like, when I first started playing in a band, like, I just tuned to the bass player. I'd be like, okay, hit your, uh, like, first note, the second note. Yes. Tune to him, and we wouldn't even know what what ha like we were probably halfway between a note, you know. <laughs> yeah. Back then, you don't know. So, like, once we started, like, okay, tuner, uh, always be in tune, uh, and then click, always be on time. Uh, uh, you know, your drummer has to be able to play the click, like, and uh, once yeah. we start nose in place, then it started bringing the level up, and uh, you know. But like, when you start out, you're like, yeah, what do what do you need that for? <laughs> Do you use the click in your in-ears? Because I know you use in-ears, but... Yeah, I have a bit in there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it definitely helps with with time and where you're landing and stuff. Uh, a lot of singers won't use, won't have any click, but I like to, to know where I am in the time, yeah. It, it must be so, because I sing and play guitar, and I'm always like, it must be so nice not to worry about the dang guitar and just worry about your vocal, and you can move around and... You know, yeah, that that must be more freeing because I'm like, you know, you figure literally like when you play guitar, you can't do as much. And you you know what I mean? You got this thing and you got to get the parts and you can't screw that up. And yeah, yeah, it, it's um. so I was going to say, uh, has your mic choice changed? I like to talk about music gear, too. So the mic choice from you know my darkest days to three days grace is there a certain brand you always go with and I know um, you use that classic mic now which is cool. Yeah, yeah, that's usually that's just uh, like he puts like effect on that out front. Uh, I used to have a bullet mic and now we use. Uh, I have it somewhere. Oh no, I brought it in. All oh, right, right. Yeah, now we use an old school mic uh, for the for the bullet mic, and uh, I, I've always been on Sennheiser mics. Uh, we got okay. a pack. My darkest days. We got a pack of Sennheisers uh, for the whole the uh, whole band and uh, drums and stuff. So, and then in uh, Three Days Grace, it's just uh, a wireless Sennheiser. Stepped it up. No more cords, which was yeah. nice. Yeah. Like, oh. Oh. yeah. Yeah. Some guys they love the cord. They love it. Yeah. You know what I mean. Like, uh, I think uh, I saw, uh, is it Ronnie Radke? Uh, he, he plays in, uh, is it yeah. Falling in the Verse? Yeah, yeah. I think I follow him on Instagram. Yeah, so I saw him play back in like 2011 or something like that. And uh, he, he uses a chord. And that dude like could fling a mic out halfway across the crowd. <laughs> And pull it right back into his hand. I was like, "Oh my god, that is super cool!" Like, yeah, I knew I couldn't do that, but it must have like taken some some practice and stuff. And I'm sure a few people got hit in the face over the years, but and a lot of mics because it, it gets weak after a while. Yeah, yeah, but to see it, it was it was all duct taped and shit on, on oh, there. Okay, oh, okay, but like to see it, like it was nuts. I, like, I was like, how is he doing that? Like it was straight <laughs> line out, straight line back right to his hand. I was like, can you wow. imagine when the audience goes, oh, he, he captures that by throwing the mic at him and then yeah. throwing it back, timing yeah. that <laughs> Pretty sick. As, as the feedback comes out the the monitors. <laughs> yeah. So you've uh, like, for people that you know necessarily have never stepped on a stage, what what's it like playing a huge outdoor arena gig where there's like thirty thousand people, and then going to a club where there's like a thousand people? Like, do you view the gig differently? Is there certain things that you worry about, like as a musician? You know, um, no, like I find, uh, you know, they're both awesome. Um, 
but I treat it the same every show. Like I, I'm going to do the, the, the same level of uh, intensity and give it the same. Like, I give it all that, that I have left or all I can give, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I find it in like the 30,000 people ones, like it feels like a surreal moment. Like uh, I played uh, in 2013 when I first joined the band, uh, we played uh, rock on the range, which is a massive festival. Yeah. And, uh, I know that. We had like we had pyro and uh, it was just crazy. It was the first one that I was like, okay, this is nuts. And I felt like, is this really happening right now? Like the crowd was just insane, like amount of people and like they're like mosh pits everywhere, surf uh, crowd surfing. It was kind of like we never we we would play for like we played a few shows for a lot of people in my darkest days, but not nothing like that ever. And like the crowd, it's just nuts. Like those songs, like like you know, animal playing animal to like a crowd like that. It was just like they, they it was crowd surfing and just nuts, you know. <laughs> I'm so, like, this is wicked. Yeah, yeah, some of the audiences are are let's say not created equal. You, you never know what you're gonna get too which yeah is, which is kind of cool yeah but um we, we just uh we played europe uh, a couple of months back and we played scotland i think it was on a saturday night too and it was absolutely crazy everybody like was hammered and just having a great time and like between between songs they were saying here we here we here we f and go i don't know if we're, <laughs> But like, like they were so into it it felt like a, like a sports event like or like some kind of crazy soccer event that was just like out of control yeah is there different countries do different things because i never even thought about that yeah like uh that's a, that's a big one there uh they, like the chant and uh in argentina uh they sing a lot of the the guitar riffs so like in animal like da 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 like whoa, 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 whoa! That's cool. Like, the whole crowd is singing like the guitar riff, which is really cool. It's like m- way different. Yeah, that must be surreal. Because then it's like, and then it gets so loud. You ever find? Well, you have in ears, but it would get so loud that it's like a a part of it helps a part of the music. You know what I mean? It's almost like in the recording now. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. sort of thing. It's yeah, almost it's, it's almost like your own string department, sort of. Hell yeah, yeah. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. What kind of guitars you got behind there? Um, right now I have uh, I got an Ivan as I just got given to me for my birthday, which is pretty cool. My nice. buddy Mango gave it to me. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, as I say, happy birthday because I know that was the other day. Oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, so I got this given to me for my birthday here. It's an Ivan as. Nice. Everyone in the audio world's a white Ibanez guitar here. Yeah. And then I just uh I just got with Schecter guitars and they sent me a few Schecters that are pretty wicked. I was gonna say I love that color on that, that gray black kinda. Yeah, and the back is like su- like super cool too. Oh, that's cool. Do you have yeah. the band is that the numbers from Three Days Grace on the on the neck? Uh I think it it is numbers. Oh, okay yeah that's cool yeah i i look forward to to playing these on stage i was uh i was just with gretch i i played gretch baritones yeah those are cool yeah do you like the grid you know the long bridges in the back yeah 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 i could never find strings for them <laughs> it's so damn long yeah <laughs> I had um I'm I I'm an ESP guy. I had an ESP baritone for a while. Now I just I use the one thousands with the Evertune bridge, which is kind of okay. cool. Yeah. Um, it's nice to do it on like the E and the A string, and then you don't do it for the high ones because it's such a weird feeling of like I'm bending the string. I know I'm bending the string, and it's not doing anything different. It's just going, oh, okay. eh, you know what I mean? Wow weird feeling but it it, it's it's very nice for recording so you set it and then you don't have to worry about tuning it eight times in between songs yeah that's nice but um i don't know if you ever use dsp i do have a schecter uh somebody traded me a guitar or i traded a guitar head for a schecter guitar and i was surprised how much i liked it yeah yeah i've had a few schecters over the years and i was like like 
th them and Ivan as like just like the the guitars like you find the right ones uh right style and they just like will never go out of out of tune you can drop yeah. the leave them in the cold and they like you pick it up like I, i've picked up uh ibanez that's been sitting for like you know forever and played it and it was like it's still in tune like, <laughs> possible nice yeah. is yeah. there any advice to give I, I guess new singers people that are wanting to get into bands and 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 learning guitar anything any advice that you would give them oh just create whatever you want to do just have fun with it and uh find people that you get along with and uh have the same drive as you if you really really want to do it for a living uh you have to find the right people that really want to want to do it you know uh, i lived in a uh live in rehearsal spot for i think about five or six years uh when i was 22 to yeah 28 so yeah like this place was wow. uh you know maybe 500 square feet with uh two bedrooms off of it didn't have a window had a skylight <laughs> as well built inside uh i don't think they have as many as as they used to uh in toronto where where we moved to but they back in the day they had like live in rehearsal spots so you lived where you jammed and yeah uh, that, I mean, why not, right? You just wake up and roll out of bed and grab your guitar and, and do it. Yeah. yeah. Back in those days, I was waking up at like 2.30 in the afternoon and then, you know, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes all day and then jam, <laughs> jam at 8 o'clock oh, for geez. four hours and that, that, was your, that was your day. Yeah. How does that work with singing? Does that, does that affect your voice, smoking? or? Uh, I'd say so, but, you know, like... It, it's like it can add some rasp and stuff i'm sure yeah yeah um back in the day before like if we wanted a gritty vocal uh you know on a on a song uh i did i drink a can of a coke and it would like i don't know like what it does it yeah you know, it'll make you sing a little bit growly or maybe the carbonation and the syrup or something yeah I know reba does a little bit of dr pepper with like pringles yeah. or something which is oh, interesting I yeah, the Pringles. <laughs> some people will eat like uh, uh, regular chips with like because the salt will helps, I guess, or something. The salt and also the the oil that's in the chip, like um, coats your some, throat. Yeah, like I, I know that Chad. I've only done it a few times, but like like take like a little shot of olive oil or like of Ooh. oil, Ooh. and it will like like coat kind of coat your throat. Yeah. But, but it like, yeah, it can have some backfiring going on there. <laughs> does, you said much. Chad does that from, from Nickelback? Yeah, like he used to make a mixture of like, I think like gummy bears, melted gummy bears and a little bit of oil. Oh. <laughs> I guess the lesser gummy bear will help your throat. Yeah. I've heard everything now. Melt your oh, gummy yeah. bears, folks. So I, I'm not going to try it, but you should try it <laughs> sometime. I when I start getting real, like real raspy, and like like my throat is getting pretty pretty thrashed, I'll uh, I got throat coat and yep. uh, the tea, honey, and then um, oh what is it? Uh, cayenne pepper. So you oh. put a little pepper in the in the drink, and it actually has inflammation uh, stuff in the cayenne pepper. Oh okay. I, I find it helps. Yeah. Do you ever do uh, clove or anything like that? Like any different spices? No. no. I'll I'll take green tea, mint tea, and add some clove and a little bit of ginger. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mint I like because I have asthma, so that's like my troubles. I'm like, man, I don't know. Like sometimes I'm like, I just can't really sing right because of my asthma, and I'm like, mint helps a lot. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. Tea is good. Um, what do you do for like when, before you go on stage? Do you do uh, like we're talking vocal warm ups? Yeah, I do about like like ten, twelve minutes of like uh, you know uh, lip trills and uh, a few scales and stuff, and uh, yeah, and then I have a few drinks and get on stage. <laughs> do you ever do any like um, I I kind of hum like do you do hums or like to lower like your lower part of your voice or um uh, no mostly just lip trills and uh no humming no 
No. No. My um I actually take lessons with with Melissa Harding, the vocal coach, and she uh we did this new one where you blow into this uh, you know, plastic bottle with water. Uh-huh. And and you try to, you know, sing and make notes and do scales and stuff and I go, "I like this more than I like warming up." Interesting. <laughs> it's well, really Well, yeah, neat. that would that would definitely help your uh your uh like, what am I looking for? It would definitely help, like, the, the you keep notes longer and stuff, like... Uh, yeah, lung you know, health I, and the pressure yeah, it, it does. Yeah, I find, like, it's funny, like, I got a little boy and, like, I, I, I'll, like, just hold a, a note forever with him and, like, and then I'll be like, how come I can do this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's why, because I do it all the time. But, like, <laughs> like I, I can hold, like, the same note for, like couple minutes just like without taking a breath you must be a good swimmer then yeah yeah i used to be yeah 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 a lot of swimmers are like that i found out the chlorine got me a little bit but i used to to love it and they they wanted me on the swimming team and i'm like can't do it man chlorine just dries the hell out of me yeah can't do it but it helps i mean especially if that's a good warm-up in itself for for singers is swimming yeah yeah and you know it works every part of your body because you're like, I'm not used to this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. the first shows every every tour, it's like, oh, geez. I got to, like, start start getting my shit together because, like, this is hard, you know? Do you know, like, a month before, like, I got to get into that mode, you know? Oh, I mean? yeah. I'll, uh, you know, I, I'll sit here in the studio and uh, sing the set over and over before uh, before a tour and just get used to it, used to it again, like, and I find when I start, like, it's like, well, like, how did I do this again? Because it's, it's a lot of breath placement, um, you know, where, where, where you can breathe. Like, you think about it when you're here, like, actually doing it. And then it just becomes natural uh, after a while. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I take a breath in this part to be able to hit this part. And, uh, yep, yep. you know, I don't hit this part so much, so hard to be able to do this part. And, uh, Repetition, yeah, too. Yeah. 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 That, what well. um I was going to ask you be before we uh head off here is uh what's the story behind a scar is born? Uh scar is born is kind of about like, you know, uh remembering that time that, you know, you, you went through some some shit in your life and uh, you know, uh going back to that place and uh, you know, just remembering how how hard it was to get through it yeah and and you know like after you've been through something uh traumatic you know you 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 try to get past it and get get on top yeah yeah it's uh i i i hear a lot of that in your in your music and uh with souvenirs too which is which is a cool tune it's a different style for for you guys i think yeah yeah I, i like that song a lot you know we we got to use, uh, you know, some different stuff. Like I love vocoders and like all sorts of like vocal effects kind of stuff. And so to yeah. be able to do a song like that and have have some vocoder and some cool like vocals that are like carrying on and stuff, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I was I always about vocal effects. I love them. Do you was the goal? Because when I listen to the new record, I feel like because you're singing about you know explosions and space and stars. I almost feel like if you had recorded the vocals like in outer space, like there's some parts where I think you were going with that feeling of either the vocal effect or, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Like uh, the guy that we uh, co-wrote a few of the, these songs with, his name is Ted Bruner, uh, and uh, I've been writing with Ted since uh, at, we co-wrote "Porn Star Dancing" together. Uh, we co-wrote a bunch of My Darkest Days stuff together. And then uh, we co-wrote uh, Fallen Angel with him, too. But uh, this record, yeah, we co- co-wrote with him a lot. And uh, he's he's all about, like, you know, space. And uh, he's always looking up NASA. And, uh, you know, and, and he, he's got a thing, like, you know, he's been through a lot of shit. Like, he lost his mom in a car accident when he was 13. Um so he's been through a lot. He lost both of his parents when he was in, in his teens. So oh, uh, for him, I, I think, you know, it, it, when when sh- shit gets really, like, you know, tough and uh, 
you just got to take a look at what we actually are and pull back for a second and then like like if you really think about the size of the universe and like the size of like this never ending space that <laughs> we're out now um yeah. it definitely brings uh perspective into uh how big your uh life is and how big your problem it might seem like a big ass problem at the time but it's actually very small in 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 the whole scale of the universe and who we are and yeah, yeah he's, he's really good at that and uh he's really into space so it kind of rubbed off on the songs for sure it's it's cool it's definitely a different uh different vibe and um who produced that record was it howard benson yeah howard benson uh, yeah and us yeah i was gonna say um your drummer and howard have a label really quick with judge and jury that i follow and i'm like he's doing some pretty cool stuff yeah 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 uh, i love working with howard and uh He's just so good with vocals and like finding harmonies and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a really, uh, it's a good experience working with him. Like it, it makes you feel good. So he's like one of the, if he ever listens to this, uh, one of the top five Howard <laughs> rock producers out there. I know, <laughs> um, Brian worked with him from Daughtry and he said he was, he was really awesome too. And, uh, I know some drummers that tracked some stuff with him and, um, I don't know, like his style is, is uh, I don't know how to explain it, because you have Crystal Lord Algae, you know, I get into a lot of the audio and the gear tech talk and stuff too, but um, it's, uh, they created, I think, what we kind of hear rock nowadays, For you sure. know what I mean? Even, yeah. even though you guys come from all different styles and you have different songs, um. It, it's it's hard to say out there when uh, that you know a few producers actually made that kind of helped that style yeah. let's say yeah i think he, he was actually one of the first guys to use auto-tune in rock music um i forget what band he used it with first but he was one of like the pioneers like nobody used any auto-tune or like any kind of uh pitch correction in uh rock music and then he kind of started doing that like pop pop was already using it and stuff uh yeah back yep. then but then he was like kind of the first rock producer to be like okay yeah i'm gonna start tuning vocals and uh yeah yeah the way he mixes drums and stuff too there's a signature there i've noticed because i've listened to a lot of his records and i was like the way he mixes the the drums and the guitars especially the drums is, is a certain way certain style he likes yeah he's definitely a uh, very intelligent guy like he went from uh being a aerospace engineer to, to switching over <laughs> in so, wow so he's probably yeah. real real technical he can get in where he blows your mind yeah yeah like at his house he has like uh, a workstation where he takes like old school an analog key uh, keyboards from back in the day and can open them up and all the soldering he like solders all the stuff back together and like knows all that stuff inside those keyboards which is pretty crazy wow i don't know anything about that but that that takes that's a talent in itself man no all i know is tie the strings together with duct tape that's my <laughs> <laughs> just tie, tie the wire together duct tape there you go just bang it like in the old days that'll work bang the screen <laughs> yeah oh well i appreciate you coming on here um this this is a lot of fun and i do have a lot more questions and stuff but um maybe maybe okay. for another time you know what i mean oh, yeah. yeah dude <laughs> So what do you uh what's your plans coming up here really quick and um any uh, maybe a new single or something you know who knows um, new music we're thinking, um we have uh we have a tour that's uh in the books it hasn't been announced yet it's a pretty big one cool. that we're looking to uh hopefully I think it's coming up April ish um and then I believe in June we're going back over to uh Europe and uh yeah a lot more shows and yeah you know like we we've already started writing for the next record um we we take no time off really and uh <laughs> you know we love writing and and touring so yeah might as well i mean if you're if you're in the creative mood and you're like guys we just keep coming up with stuff you might as well do it cuz there there might be a time where you do hit a little low and you're like ah, pff, i don't know you know, yeah. Then you got that stuff to draw from to 
to make you more creative. Exactly. That. But yeah, your um, your drummer is really involved too with with the whole creative process because I started watching a lot more interviews with him too, and I go, I I didn't really know that you know yeah, as, yeah. as much because he's, he's super talented. Like he can play every instrument you put in front of him. Um, he, he's really good with lyrics. Um, yeah, like my my. My thing is like melody. Like I can, uh, I I like making melodies and like uh, yeah. create, and like I can mumble some stuff, and he can hear like kind of lyrics in it, and like kind of, like oh that kind of sounds like that, and like it will put him onto uh you know like oh that, that like just writing the lyrics out, and then like we perfect them as a band and and go through it. So yeah, like you know Neil Neil is definitely a very very talented guy and. Uh, yeah, we're we're lucky to have them. It's awesome. I know um, the first, especially the when I heard the first two three uh, three days grace records, I listened to the drums and some stuff on the third one too, and I'm like, some of these beats on here, I'm like, how the hell do you play them? I mean, they're they're not speed metal, but they're the pockets that he hits some of the beats. I'm like, he's doing like backward beats and he's doing this, and I'm like, yeah. It's just some of the songs I I can't I can't figure out on drums. <laughs> uh, yeah, like actually, like just a great drummer. Like, like I don't think he like he doesn't spend a shit ton of time. Like a, a lot of drummers out there that are like you know like Daniel Adair from uh, Nickelback. He's like known as like one of the best drummers out there. He'll spend so much time like time playing drums. But Neil Neil's so like talented in other places where it likes like songwriting or like making riffs and making keyboard parts and like yeah he, he he's like he'll spend time on that too but uh you know he naturally just jumps on the drums and he's right back to where he was it's pretty crazy that's cool i might have to have a producer chat with him someday that's probably why he he's in that producer role now because he does yeah. he's so creative oh yeah he'd have a lot more insight into like you know gear and stuff like that for the that's recording cool. parts I, li I like gear talk I try, yeah. I try to, I try to, I'm like, everyone's like, well, what are you going to do when you start to interview people? I go, well, I'm not going to be, I'm just going to have a chat with him. And I'm like, I'm going to talk gear and it's not going to be like, oh, where did you grow up? And what, you know, like you've yeah. probably done those interviews where they ask you just those same questions that are like droney, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. not to knock FM, but, uh, you know, you only have so much time. So they have like a couple questions and then it's like, oh. yeah. And, and for you, you're, you're a musician as well. So, you know, like what kind of stuff you, you use and like, uh, you know, you know, the gear, whereas like, you know, some people don't really know, uh, you know, yeah. gear, stuff like that. What's, what's tuning your guitar? I have no idea. Should you ever yeah. tune your guitar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This is Palangi Studio of Rock, only here on Radio Wigwam. You guys will hear some, you know, reruns of this. Eventually, it'll be on Mixcloud. And make sure you head over to our YouTube page, all right? And uh, it will be on the Facebooks pretty much everywhere. It'll be all over. You'll, you'll find um, pockets that'll be like, Frank just uploaded this, and they uploaded that, and it goes there. So we appreciate you guys tuning in here, and we have some other exciting interviews coming up. We have Wes from Puddle of Mud for February coming up, so shh, that'll be cool. That'll be a cool one. Matt, man, thanks so much. My Darkest Days, Three Days Grace. Um, I'm going to have to just chat with you for a few minutes here afterwards, but uh, this this is awesome, man. I appreciate it, and uh, thanks. thanks for Let's your time and, and everything. Let's do it again. I will. We got to get your drummer on board here. We'll talk some more gear, gear stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Thanks very much. Matt, any last words? Oh, just uh, thanks for all the support. Thanks for having me on, buddy. I appreciate it. All right, man. See you later, guys. <laughs>